welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's very exciting indeed, as we're going to take a look at this, the Lychee Pi 4A. This is the most powerful RISC V computer I've so far tested, and it even comes with a desktop version of Debian pre-installed on its eMMC flash storage. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Lychee Pi 4A from Cypede with its RISC-V system on a chip. In case you're not in the know, RISC-V is a free and open instruction set architecture, or ISA, that provides an alternative to the closed ISAs used in today's x86 and ARM CPUs. RISC V is already widely used in microcontrollers, but it's still developmental in server and end user computing. So it's important to stress that what we have here is a board for those who want to experiment with or develop for RISC V. In this box is an official release Pi 4A, with 8GB of RAM and 32GB of onboard flash storage, for which I paid $135. There's also a 16128 version for $179, and initially there was an 88 beta version, but I decided to wait for this 832. So let's open it up. I think we just slide the carton like that. We do take the box and somehow get in. Come on, let us in. Very exciting. Oh, there we are. Here's our new single board computer, and it's even got a Wi Fi antenna pre connected. Isn't that cool? And uh, what we have here is a Lychee Pi Module 4A, or LM4A, plugged into a carrier board. And SIP planned to release a cluster board which will take seven of these LM4A modules, and they're also working on a tablet and a laptop. Indeed, if we go across to this video clip that they've shared on what we used to call Twitter, we can see an LM4A, and if we play the video, Yes, it's very exciting. We're looking at a working RISC-V laptop. Anyway, let's remove the board from the packing. We'll come back to this in a second. We find what's this, a label, which tells us that the image on the MMC storage may be uh, an old version. We should update it. We'd probably do that. But uh, other than that, we'll get rid of that. And uh, oh, look, we can lift this out. And beneath here, we find a little bag. There's a, a thermal pad. I think that's definitely a thermal pad. So in here, I would guess, and indeed I know there should be a heatsink. I can actually get inside. Should be a cooler. There we go. What have we got in here? We have this looks like a USB lead. That's definitely a USB lead. And yes, this is a, a cooler with a fan. Right, let's delve into the hardware, and we'll start with the LM4A system on a module, or SOM, which isn't a sodium form factor. And as far as I can see, we can unclip this like this. And uh, yes, we can, and we'll take this out and put it down over here, where we can see at the heart of the module, we have a TH1520 system on a chip. This is from T-Head, the chip division of Alibaba, and has four 64-bit Zante C910 RISC-V processor cores, clocked at 1.85 GHz. There's also an Imagination BXM464 GPU, as well as a 4TOPS Neural Processing Unit, or MPU. Also on the module, we have our 8 GB of 64-bit low-power DDR4 RAM, and our 32 GB of EMMC flash storage. And if we take a look under the sum like that, well, we can see there's not a lot underneath. If we return to the carrier board, just before we plug the sum back in, it's worth noting we have these boot selection switches, so we can boot from microSD as well as the onboard EMMC. And clearly, these switches are not ideally located beneath the sum, but they weren't included at all on the beta boards, so it's good they're now available. Anyway, let's replace the SOM. Just clips back in like this, push down and uh, click. There it goes. 
And let's now take a look at the board's connectivity. And this starts with Wi-Fi. If I do that, there we are. We can see a, a wireless, a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Meanwhile, on the front edge, we find lots of good computery stuff and specifically two one gigabit Ethernet ports and four Type-A USB 3 ports. And then on the end, we've got a 12 volt barrel jack that provides one option to power the board. Rotating 90, there's not a lot to see other than some switches, but if we quarter turn again, we find a full-size HDMI 2.0 socket supporting up to 4K output, as well as a 3.5 mm audio jack, a 20-pin GPIO header, the wireless antenna connector, a reset switch, and a USB-C port, which can be used to power the board with a 5 volt input, and which also provides USB 2.0 connectivity for imaging the onboard flash. Finally, on our last edge, we have a boot switch, we have a two-pin fan header, and if you were thinking, this must be the fan header, it isn't, this is a speaker connector. And then, also on this last edge, we have the potential to add a power over Ethernet module. If we turn the board over, I'm sure it won't mind, they rarely do. The first thing I notice under here is the key here for the GPIO pins, so we know what they are, and also here we've got a micro SD card slot. And then at the bottom edge, we've got here two MIPI CSI camera serial interface connectors for connecting cameras, and we've also got in the middle here a MIPI DSI display serial interface connector for connecting an LCD display, and it can be a touch panel because we've got a touch panel connector. And so there we are the Cypede Lychee Pi 4A SOM and Carrier Board, a RIS-5 computer with great potential. And the final thing I'd note is that Cypede even sell a metal case. Greetings, and guess what? It's now time for our first boot. And as you can see, I've fitted the cooler using the thermal pad, and I've attached the fan, which doesn't apparently spin all of the time, so it might not spin directly. But uh, in theory, if I turn on the power, this RISC 5 computer will boot straight into Debian. So let's give it a go. This is my first time powering this board. I'm going to reach around here and press the switch. And there we are. We have got a small LED, a little red LED down here. I don't know if you can see that. Other than that, Nothing on the screen so far. It's very exciting, isn't it? Oh, look, it's going to boot. We've got our little Linux penguins there. And uh, I thought this might not work necessarily because I sometimes have to mess around to, to record SBCs, but clearly this one is behaving so far. And if you know anything about RISC five SBCs, I was about to say that they're difficult to get going. You can spend ages getting a working image, but we've come straight to Debian. That was amazing compared to any other RISC V board I've tried out. As you can see, I'm rather excited. So, and I just have to put in a username and a password. And I hope those are right. I'm still being a bit shocked, actually. All oh, the fans started to turn just for a little tiny bit. And there we are. We're in Debian and it's working. I am astounded. The out-of-the-box experience here with a RISC-V board is amazing. i just go to the menu. It's, it's working. That's not bad, is it? Can we go to a browser? Should we try to go to a browser? I'm, you're catching me being shocked, as you can tell. There we are. We've got a browser. It's come up. And uh, shall we try to go to the board's own website? There we go. I always think if a board can look at its own website, it's doing OK. And... We're getting somewhere. I've got that slightly wrong, haven't I? Never mind. Let me try again. Yes, I think that's working better. The only problem we've had here is me typing in a correct web address. If that's the only problem we have with this board. That's amazing. This is clearly a different level of experience on a RISC V board than what I've what I've experienced previously. This really is very impressive. And this is part of the uh, the documentation for the board. There's very good documentation for this board. It says it's in work in progress, some of these pages and things, but even so, we have got quite good documentation. Again, considering this is RISC-V hardware, which is really, you know, 
This is this is cutting edge stuff. Anyway, I'm going to stop being very excited by this. I'm going to make a few changes to scaling, things like that, investigate exactly what's working here, how recent the images I've got on the EMMC. But uh, so far, the experience on the uh, Lightly Ply 4A is very good indeed. Well, here I am back again after some hours of testing and the first thing to report is that I've had no crashes at all. So this is by far the most stable desktop Linux experience I've yet had on RIS-5 hardware. Having checked, I believe that I'm running the official Cypede version of Debian for the Lychee Pi 4A from July the 6th, 2023. And whilst there are two later July releases, and I might at some point try and upgrade to the last one of those, right now I'm letting sleeping dogs lie. As things are working well, upgrading the image on this board is not a trivial task, and the only issue I've come across, which we'll see in a few minutes' time, is still listed as a known issue, even in the very latest operating system image available. So, let's have a more detailed look around, and note that so far I've not installed any software, so everything I'm about to show you was pre-installed. And I thought we'd start off by clicking on this readme file down there, because you might be wondering, what's in the readme file? It sort of asks to be opened, doesn't it? And uh, there isn't much in it at all, actually. There's one URL. There it is. But it does prove that LibreOffice Writer is working, which is uh, good. And we've got, in fact, the rest of LibreOffice here pre-installed and working pretty well. We can run up, for example, LibreOffice Calc. As you can see, this is, this is working nicely. What I'm really trying to show you is this is a perfectly usable desktop system running on RIS-5 hardware. Let's go across to the file system and just do a properties on that see what our storage situation is. And you can see we've got a capacity of about 28 gigabytes on our 32 gigabyte MMC flash storage. And we've got about four and a half gigabytes used with the operating system and the pre-installed software and about 23.6 gigabytes free. So I am very pleased I waited to get the board with a 32 gigabyte MMC. It leaves me with a lot of flexibility. So let's go back to the menu. There's various accessories pre-installed here. And one is the task manager. I'll run that up because some of you really like to see the task manager. There it is. You can see we've only got about half a gig of memory being used here. 7% of our memory is being used as we're well, idling along. That's, that's not too bad, is it? Although, let's be honest, years ago, that would have been the whole memory on the system. But uh, anyway, the other thing I want to show you here under accessories is that we've got a sensor viewer like that. And this obviously shows us output from some sensors which are showing us here temperatures, what, 49, 48 degrees. And up here, we can go to the sensor drop down. There's also another sensor there. I think it's the same sensor, actually. That's showing 50. Is that the same as this now? No, it isn't actually, is it? So who knows? I don't know where these sensors are, what they're exactly showing us, but I'm guessing one or all of these are in the system on the chip, which is obviously running at about uh, just under 50 degrees C. So it's a good thing it's got its fan, which we can see is running away here. And it is getting very slightly warm if I touch the heatsink on the edge. The fan is clearly doing its job. So let's look at uh, something else. Let's go back into the menu. And also pre-installed here, we've got GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, which comes up relatively quickly. Oh, the fan's going slightly faster now as it's uh, struggling to load in the mushrooms and everything else that make up GIMP. There we are, it's coming up and loading. This is, not, again, it's not bad performance, is it? Not the fastest in the world, but certainly perfectly usable. I'll go and do a new document. It'll do it perfectly happily. There we are, and I could scribble. Yes, it's, it's working. This is a, as you can tell, I'm very impressed with the desktop experience we're now getting on the RISC V hardware. It isn't going to be that long before we have really, really good desktop RISC V systems. Next, I'm going to plug in an external SSD like uh, that, and hopefully it'll come up, and it does. Even that's amazing, because that doesn't work in the software on some other RISC V boards right now, but it works clearly over here. And if we just scroll down here, what I want to do is to play a video. There is a local video, 1080p video. It's come up in VLC Media Player, which is uh, pre-installed, and we'll just uh, full screen that. And as you can see, we're playing the video perfectly happily. 1080p video is working perfectly well 
on this hardware. Again, you're probably thinking not amazing for a computer in general, but this is very good in terms of the development of RISC V hardware. We've got working local video playback at a HD resolution. That is a rather good indeed. And of course, I'm sure you want to see what's going on in the browser. So let's go back into a Chromium, which we looked at in the last segment of the video. Here it is again, I'll just get rid of that. We've gone to explaining computers. That's nice, isn't it? And I've also bookmarked a few other things. I've bookmarked over here the uh, Chrome's GPU internals. Well, we can see that we have got hardware acceleration. It's one thing to have a GPU in a system on a chip. It's quite another to have software that can actually make use of it. And clearly it can make use of it here. And uh, just to prove that, I've also bookmarked the uh, WebGL Aquarium down there. Let's just bring that up and uh, that'll run up like that. Let's do an F11 and bring it full screen. And uh, there we are. We've got little fishes. It's achieving about what, um, just over 30 frames a second with 500 fishes, which is not you know, spectacular compared to some systems, but it gives us a perfectly nice sort of fish tank to look at, doesn't it? Again, I'm impressed. This is massive progress in terms of a RISC-V. Anyway, let's go back to uh, explaining computers like that, because the other thing I'm sure you want to see is YouTube playback. How's that progressing on RISC V? We'll go to the Explaining Computers YouTube channel and it'll come up hopefully fairly quickly. The, the word browsing experience isn't too bad. Come on, you can do it. Willing it on always helps, of course. And there we are. And uh, we can have a look at my uh, channel trailer there. Let's make that full screen. And you might be able to hear here when the, the video audio keeps coming up that the audio isn't good. There is a problem with HDMI audio playback in Chromium. Welcome to the Explaining Computers YouTube channel. But this is playing pretty well, isn't it? What's it currently in? It's in a 720p. And let's just bring up stats for nerds. And um, there are some drop frames, but it's not dropping a lot. It's not dropping badly at all. I tested quite a bit and I think you could watch 720p video perfectly happily. You'd have to plug in headphones into the 3.5 millimeter audio to get good audio output or plug some speakers into that, something like that. But we've certainly got decent 720p video playback. And let's just try 1080p. This is not as good, but I will show you it. 1080p is going to struggle a bit. Hasn't dropped any frames at all so far, but it will. It's buffering, isn't it? It'll get there eventually. Actually, oh yes. I was going to say it's fine, but no, it is actually having a few problems. So uh, anyway, I'm impressed. This still demonstrates great progress with Risk Five. Risk Five hardware and software for desktop application is still developmental, but it continues to improve. So much so that I think I can now do an experiment where I spend seven days doing all of my desktop computing on RISC-V hardware. Specifically, I'm going to be using in this test the SIPE Lychee Pi 4A as well as the Star 5 Vision 5 II. So do look out for my forthcoming video called RISC-V Week. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.